The show is really awesome. We're going straight from Austin. Let's talk sports. Welcome back to Let's Talk Sports. I'm Dan Hurwitz. And I'm Samir Butcher. Um, we're happy to be back. Last week we kind of just took the week off. What were we doing, Dan? Just living the dream in Austin, Texas. You know it. Anyway, we've always been spending our time uh, the past couple of weeks talking about Texas football. We're going to switch things up a little bit this time because Dan and I, before the camera started rolling, were having a debate over who we think is the best team in the Big 12. Um, basically, we know the debate comes down to Oklahoma, Texas, and Nebraska. Um, you seem to have a clear answer to this debate. My answer, I'm a little bit more confused. Dan, what do you think? You know, those mighty Baylor Bears didn't do it for me last week against <laughs> TCU, so... You're right there. Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas are definitely the top three. I mean, they've been that way so far all season, preseason projections. That's how it's supposed to be. And, you know, through the season, it still is. Um, Nebraska looked pretty good last week against Washington on national spot at Washington against a solid team. Put up 50-plus points against a Pac-10 team. 56, I think, right? Exactly. With, with the redshirt freshman quarterback. Yeah. Texas plays a Pac-10 team this week. I personally don't think they'd be able to put up 56 points, even 40 points against a Pac-10 team. Right, and this is where I think we're comparing apples to oranges as far as offense goes. I understand how good Nebraska's offense is, much better than what uh, you know we in the sports community thought they would be. Uh, Texas offense is, is a totally different style, though. You know, it's based off of um, a more traditional, or it's trying to be based off a more traditional uh, scheme of taking some snaps under center, playing some power football, and then just getting throws where you can. I think it's tough to compare the two. Um, and if I had to say who was better, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Texas did defeat a Big 12 team, and Nebraska's played some pretty uh, lowly teams, if you ask me. Um, they played Idaho, and they did play Washington, you're right, who has Jake Locker, but Jake Locker just looked sad um, to Nebraska, and maybe that's a credit to Nebraska's defense. Oklahoma's obviously at the top of this conversation, too. Where do you think they lie in between uh, Texas and Nebraska? Well, the Sooners so far... Um, they're 3-0, of course, like Texans and Nebraska, but have only squeaked by opponents such as Utah State and um, Air Force, who they beat by seven points and three points respectively. And, I mean, Oklahoma football, they're about blowing out these teams that are in these low, lower conferences. Uh, it's a little surprising not seeing them be able to, you know, really step their game up and really create a big margin of victory. Like right, and what makes this... Um, this debate even more difficult to analyze is the fact that Oklahoma is the only team that's beat a ranked opponent. They they creamed Florida State, and and so how you factor that into the equation is a little bit more difficult, considering the fact that they only beat Air Force by what three points, mm -hmm. and Utah State of all teams by seven points, and it and it took kind of last game last minute heroics in that game for them to pull out that victory. I don't know who separated themselves from the top of the pack. Uh, you think it's Nebraska still? I'm still going to say Nebraska. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma does once they actually have an away game. I mean, everyone knows Oklahoma's good at home. I think they're 33, maybe 34 straight wins at home. I mean, once they get a true road test, it'll be interesting how they how they face in that situation. Texas, still a little unclear. I mean, Garrett Gilbert still needs to improve some. They still need to find that superstar go-to guy in offense, but it'll be interesting to see how the season continues to play out. I think the Texas offense will sort of get back in the swing of things and play that Texas-style offense that uh, you know we've all become accustomed uh, to viewing. Kirkendall last week had a had a break a breakout receiving game, you know, 100 plus yards. Garrett Gilbert will get back in the swing of things. Those three interceptions, I think, were sort of flukish. Um, and that Texas defense is nasty, only allowing 14 points against Texas Tech, a team that loves to throw it and, and throw it down the throats of a secondary and didn't do it very much against, you know, the Texas defense. That's why I'm going to keep Texas at the top of the Big 12. But I guess until Texas plays Nebraska and OU and those three teams play around, we won't know. Two weeks to Oklahoma yeah. and I think four weeks till Nebraska, but their games are back-to-back -back with the bye week in between. Right. And college football, big deal. But, you know, now we're looking ahead to NFL football. Last time we did the NFL picks, I came out on top. I was 4-0. and Dan was 1-3. and We skipped last week, obviously, because we didn't have an episode. So this week we're going to go ahead into our uh, weekly segment, Dan and Samir's NFL picks. What, do you, what, what games do we have on the docket? Well, I can't remember all in my head. I had to write down a napkin. We'll start off with Atlanta at New Orleans. Samir, what do you think about that game? I'm going to always stick with New Orleans. I think they're the top team in the NFL, um, you know, barely above my Houston Texans. I think they're going to take down the Atlanta Falcons. Let me disagree with you there. Atlanta had a really strong week last week, uh, destroying Arizona. I'm going to take an upset pick right there. Wow. Secondly, we'll go with 
the New York football Jets at the Miami Dolphins. What do you got? Yikes. Uh, I'm going to go with an upset, and I'm going to say the Miami Dolphins pull it out over the Jets. I don't know if you'd actually call it an upset, considering the Jets I don't think are that great, though Mark Sanchez did have a great game uh, last week. I'll agree with you there. Miami gets the win. Um, thirdly, Tennessee Titans and Vince Young, who we don't know what's up with him, at the New York Giants. What do you got there? I think Vince Young will be starting, uh, you know, he was pulled from the game just because they maybe needed a change of pace considering he threw three picks. I don't agree with the decision. I'm going to go with the Titans. I'll take the Giants there. I'll go a little differently with, from you and uh, go with Eli Manning. Okay, and uh, what's our final game? Final, I think we might both agree on this. Uh, Texans and Cowboys, of course, play on Sunday. What do you think? Uh, the fact that you have to ask me means you don't know me well enough, Dan. The I'll, Houston Texans are going to win that game. I'm afraid I'll have to agree with you also. The Cowboys just aren't looking so great. Texans playing pretty well. But uh, please keep track of uh, Let's Talk Sports and our picks. If you want to pick against us and send a little comment, feel free to do so. We can have a little competition there. Also, if you want to give us suggestions over what the winner of this weekly game should get um, at the end of the season, we'll entertain those ideas. I'm thinking money, but uh, it's up to you. Have a great day. Thanks, bye.